Hey, it's Dr. Glenn, and I've got a cool little story to tell you about. It's the cockroach conversion secret, which is a disgustingly powerful lesson for turning visitors into dollars online. And this harks back way to my youth, almost 30 years ago, I'm embarrassed to say, when I was going for an orientation meeting at Stony Brook for the weekend. And there wasn't a lot of preparation for the orientation. They just said, you know, come as you are, we'll feed you. And um, I didn't bring a lot of money. Um, I didn't have a job back then and my mom didn't give me much money. And I remember her crying as I'm driving off and I get there and they assign me a roommate whose name was Scott. He was an interesting fellow. Um, and it was kind of nice to have a friend as soon as you got there. And he said he didn't have any money either, but he wasn't worried about it because he had a great way to make money. Um, this guy should be selling business opportunities when you see what he did. He had a great way to make money. He said we could throw a party and become really popular that weekend and all the girls would come and blah, blah, blah. So I said, I'm in. So he says, great. Your only job is to catch a cockroach. You got to catch a live cockroach. You can't kill it and bring it in a glass with you to the dorm that evening. And so um, being a 17 year old guy and cockroaches not being all that hard to find at Stony Brook University, I went out and caught a live cockroach and I brought it with me to the dorm where Scott called everybody to the central area um, and said he had a very important announcement that about two dozen people gathered around. And he asked me if I'd place the cockroach in a glass on the table. And as soon as the cockroach was on the glass on the table and he was telling everybody he had an important announcement, he said, hey everyone, when there is 50 bucks on the table, I'm gonna put this cockroach in my mouth I'm going to let him run around in my teeth and then I'm going to eat him. And people looked in kind of disgust and, you know, there are a couple of oohs and grosses from the girls in very emphatic terms. But here's the thing. Nobody left the room. They all stood there staring at the jar. Kind of unbelievable that Scott would say this. And there was a long, awkward silence after the initial ooze and grosses, and pay, pay attention to all this here because it does really come around to some conversion points. Um, and during that awkward silence, Scott kept pointing to the roach in the jar and motioning for people to put money on the table. I was probably as fascinated and disgusted as everybody else. <laughs> Finally, one of the guys steps forward and throws a $5 bill on the table and says, I, I got to see this. And you know, you know, guys, so it's not really that surprising that eventually somebody would do that. And after a little more silence, another guy says, me too, and throws another $5 bill on the table. And this is 1982, so that's was probably like $5,000 today, right? <laughs> probably more like 10 bucks a day. Um, and then very slowly at first, and then at a, a faster and faster pace, everybody else starts throwing dollar bills and fives, and then even a 10. Um, and the mood in the room was this fascination combined with excitement and disgust. Like people were kind of dropping their mouths saying, oh my God, I can't believe he's going to do this. And then they were saying, I can't believe I'm putting money on the table. I can't believe he's putting money on the table. But there was a frenzy that was developing and people were throwing money on the table to watch Scott eat a cockroach. Um, within just a couple of minutes, there was more than 50 bucks on the table. And as soon as I nodded to Scott that there was 50 bucks on the table, he did exactly what he said he would do. He put the cockroach in his mouth. He opened it wide and we all watched the cockroach crawl around in his mouth for 30 seconds or so. And I still have that image burned in my mind. And then he ate it. He actually did with a big smile on his face, licking his lips when he was done and smugly picking up the money from the table. And he used it to throw a little party, a little beer and pizza party for the weekend. And um, in many ways, it actually made my weekends, although I don't recommend that you do this. And if anybody is an adolescent, this was a very adolescent thing to do. So I'm telling the story for the conversion <laughs> in, inherent in it, I'm not recommending that you go and eat cockroaches. Okay, but he, he actually did it. And it was truly disgusting. It was also truly fascinating. And I still can feel the electricity in the room from the moment that he, he did that. So here are eight money-making secrets you can learn from a cockroach. First... You've got to do something very unusual but true to get the attention of a crowd. Um, Terry Dean taught me that when people read your headline, they shouldn't be able to go to sleep that night unless they find out the rest of the story. And so, for example, I have got two very successful letters um, with headlines to do that. My hyper-responsive club at um, 
or you can go to glennsentme.com if you want to read the whole letter, glennsentme.com. But the headline is one in 2000 visitors drive half your profit online. One in 2000 visitors drive half your profit online. What? See, if, if you've got any respect for me, you got to know more. Um, that wouldn't necessarily work cold, but if you've got any respect for me, you, you got to know more. And emotional eating, it's lose the weight, lose the stress, lose the guilt. Do you mean I'm not going to feel guilty and stressed when I when I lose the weight? That's interesting. I got to know more. So you have to do something very unusual, but true, almost unbelievable, but true to get the attention of crowd. And they shouldn't be able to sleep at night until they find out the rest of the story. The second secret you can learn from a cockroach. To get money from a crowd, you've often got to give people a story they can tell their friends and loved ones. So uh, in, in this example, it's... um. It's not quite as strong, but you can take the example much further when you look at higher ticket items. Um, there were some people there who probably couldn't buy a beer that night or couldn't go to the movies or, you know, couldn't couldn't do something significant. And when their friend says, hey, do you want to go to the movies? I thought you had five bucks. They would have to say, well, yeah, but this dude ate a cockroach. It was totally worth it. They need a justification to tell their friends. Well, I learned from John Carlton that at a much higher level, uh, if you're selling a Mercedes or you're selling, um, you know, a $5,000 service or you're selling even a $1,000 product, you have to give people a justification they can tell their, their spouses, their loved ones, so that not only do they feel confident in, um, in making the purchase, but they're not going to have to deal with a self-esteem hit when there are loved ones or colleagues come to them and ask them what why the hell did you do that so to get money from a crowd you got to give people a story they can tell their friends and loved ones to justify the expense it's not just convincing them it's convincing their friends and loved ones very interesting i thought free you have to go up so you have to go up against some very powerful psychological forces if you're going to sell to a crowd and it's very awkward at first so i want you to imagine the first dozen or so times that scott did this um he probably felt very, very uncomfortable while everybody was staring at him see, and, and thinking how gross and disgusting he was. Um, it probably took a, a lot of fortitude and determination. And <laughs> I don't know that this is the best goal for fortitude and determination, but I'm sure that the first half dozen or dozen times that he did this, that it was very uncomfortable for him. The reason I'm telling you that is that in most markets, when you do your research, you will find that there are psychological forces in the crowd which are obfuscating the truth. It's always the case. There are, and that's why when you ask someone who's very, very experienced in a market to tell you, you know, the secrets about making a purchase, they'll always be able to tell you something that everybody else thinks is, is false, that nobody else knows. And so in order to break through the silence with that, you have to be willing to tolerate that awkward feeling. You, you have to be willing to be the guy standing up in a crowd saying, I'm going to eat a cockroach. Now, that cockroach is not really a disgusting cockroach. It's really just the truth. And it's actually in your best interest and everybody else's best interest when you do it. But um, you got to be willing to eat a cockroach if you're going to make a difference in the market and really have an impact. Number four, the first sales you make are always the hardest because you don't have social proof. And sometimes you just got to tough it out until you do. But in the upcoming course, The Total Conversion Code, totalconversioncode.com, which you can get on the earlier bird list there, we'll show you 28 ways to prove your case without testimonials. Um, but sometimes really all you have to do is tough it out and deal with the discomfort while you're waiting for people to stand up and shout your name. Number five, you've got to create an atmosphere which holds people's attention with excitement and fascination, and sometimes even disgust, until you've been able to present your whole sales argument. Um, I think that one is self-evident. Number six, people don't have money burning holes in their pockets, but they'll still give you some if you ask for it in the right way. And this was particularly important to me because I used to feel uncomfortable about charging appropriate prices in the market. Um, even, even as a psychologist way back when, when I was about to break the $100 an hour barrier, it was uncomfortable for me because I thought, well, shouldn't they be putting this in their child's education fund or shouldn't they be, you know, paying down their mortgage? Um, but then as I started to observe people and I realized that, well, 
mostly they were spending their money on, you know, beer or pizza or not necessarily all constructive things. And they found money when things were important enough um, that they believed they would change their lives. And at that point, when I understood that, I became more willing to charge appropriate prices and stop commoditizing myself. And, um, and in the end, I actually treated them better and myself better because of it. Um, because, you know, all the good things that happen when you've got margin and you can actually run run a business. So people don't have money burning holes in their pockets. There's a lot of people there, like I said, that probably I couldn't go to the movies or had to make some other choices that weekend because they spent five bucks watching a guy eat a cockroach. Number seven, you have to follow through on your promises if you want to keep the money, no matter how difficult it might be to do so. Um, and I think that it's very easy to get carried away with all of the research and sales and you 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 develop a power um, when you study these marketing techniques that um, can actually work against you if you don't follow through with the promises that that you made so uh, if you want to keep the money you got to follow follow through on your promises no matter how difficult it might be to do so um, conversion secret number eight which you can learn from a cockroach is that sometimes disgusting jobs pay really well Scott actually told me he's made as much as $800 in a bar with this business opportunity, which isn't bad for an 18 year old and an hour's work. Um, I actually think that he worked his way through college eating cockroaches. <laughs> I kind of lost touch with him after that. I think we went out one weekend and um, he was a little bit of a crazy guy as you might expect, but um, but I, I really do believe he was able to work his way through college eating cockroaches. And I'm not telling you to eat cockroaches, but I am saying, there are probably things that feel disgusting to you that could solve your financial problems quickly if you were willing to do them. So without prostituting yourself, without breaking some, you know, unbreakable vow, what might those things do? What, what might those things be? I think it's worth thinking about. Um, and those are the eight money money secrets that you can learn from a cockroach. Um, I just want to make sure that you are all on the early bird pricing list for the total conversion code. We're going to be doing probably two, maybe three um, um, free conversion webinars in association with our launch. And uh, if you want to get first notice of those webinars, because they pack up very quickly, and um, that is the drop dead truth, I suggest that you go to totalconversioncode.com and just sign up for the early notification list. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.